So the number one thing to think about with Rishi's lead here on Arachnite is what moves does this Arachnite have? Arachnite has one of the widest coverage move pools, if not the widest coverage move pool in the entire game. I think we've seen Crystal Spikes, but uh, I'd be curious to see what other moves uh, they have going on here. Yeah, you know, we didn't get to see too much from this Arachnite, so I'm happy Rishi gets to pick it up here. Let's see how Fool responds, though. It's so dangerous, right? Like, if you know the Arachnite has Thunderstrike, you can lead... Uh, sorry, you're more worried about leading uh, your Water Thames. But if you know it doesn't have Thunderstrike, you just slap this Whiplum, right? Like, Rishi doesn't have anything to deal with it. Which then infers that it probably has T Strike, right? Like if you if Rishi's leading this in mm -hmm. and letting you have your whip lump, it probably means that he is running Thunder Strike and you should be careful. But the the you know, the water cannon soil steam opener, this is kind of a mid range classic these days. Yeah, super, super powerful. And we do know we caught wind of Mr. Rishi's Kinu. It is a benefactor one. So maybe from those attacks, it could survive. But it's still a so, so much damage coming into the potential of that left-hand spot next to Kinu. But yeah, I agree. I think because he left the Wimplum there, he should have Thunderstrike. And we saw Crystal Spike. But we haven't seen much more than that, right? So I'm, I could only assume things like Cozy Net, since it's such a great move on him. Uh, and then what else, East? What else does he have? I mean, I know he has access to so many things, so it's always up in the air. Okay, let me see if I can remember them all. There is Unseen Blow, Awful Song, Thunderstrike, Soul Shout, Water Cannon, Plague, Crystal Spikes, um, God, Digi Threat, Harmful Microwaves, and I think off the top of my head, that's like all I can remember. Also, he just has Cage randomly. Um, <laughs> so it, versatile. It, yeah, lots of moves. Mm -hmm. The thing to watch out for Adaptive that I'm sure Rishi like probably knows is coming and has something to deal with is if the Ukama water cannons it, it's going to turn it into a water type. And then Venom spread is really going to hurt. Oh, I can see right? that. So, so he's... but. I mean, the one thing about playing against Rishi is, like, Rishi literally has the most tournament games played of anyone in this game. He's got experience. I will do... Uh, I will, like... I will, like, do 10 push-ups on camera if Rishi gets got by. <laughs> uh, All right. You know, water cannon, water cannon venom spread on this arachnite, right? Like, surely he sees it coming. It, I will consider it self-sabotage if Rishi gets got by water cannon and of course we're seeing here though is we're hearing a uh, word on the street that Akronite might just have a little bait on him so we will see if that yeah. does get applied maybe those toxic ticks get nullified after that prox but yeah it looks good i like this little combo the acronox uh yukama always always so effective onto virtually anything covers so much of your bases on those two temptums alone so we're seeing here exactly why Fool has done so well in this tournament. So here's step one is Water Cannon onto the spider over 50 Rishi, something please. percent. Do we have the bait or is it something else? Yeah, okay. This is still like, if he goes for Sting, it's still going to really hurt though. Ah, right, he goes Sting the other way. Okay, not too shabby. Locking in the Kinu. Uh, I almost, I guess because you couldn't lock in the Arachnite either way. So let's see what the Arachnite decided to do. Unseen Blow will be that turn one move for him. So 74 all the way down to 26. So virtually about 50% damage right there. So not too shabby. Things like Aquatic Whirlwind go online. But in front of a now Water Spider and a Nature Tempton, this Yukama not feeling too, too comfortable. Let's take a look at the back line, what he could potentially swap into. Thinking so. One of the weird parts about this is that uh, Fool was committing a lot to try and kill this Kinu here. Like he's got Venom spread up, he might even be able to turbo into the Venom spread because of the plus one speed on his Akama. I'm just thinking like, you've got Volarin, Tuvine, and Chimurian in the back. Are you really that worried about being able to kill this Kinu? I wonder if maybe Fool is allocating his resources a little bit recklessly um, by targeting Kinu here at all and. Maybe a Sting just heading into a Rackenite might have been the better play. But it does get rid of Benefactor, which is something you definitely have to uh, take care of. Someone in the chat said, 30 push-ups, not 10. Uh, I like my life. I do not wish to die. Uh, but thank <laughs> you for your suggestion. There we go. And yeah, I could only agree more. You have so many answers to that Keanu in the back line. Uh, but on that same thought, 
Uh, speaking of answers for the back line, this is exactly why I feel like you should be saving the Yukama. You know, Kinu now has access to Resin Trap, right? You don't want to eat a Resin Trap to the face if you're Yukama. So I think a nice little swap to potentially the Volarin doesn't feel that bad. But you know, if he does have the Thunder Strike on the Volarin, perhaps you're just better off bringing in something like the Tuvine or the Shimurian to eat that potential Thunder Strike. Because you come up with the Aquatic Whirlwind is going to be doing like 70, 80% on the two rock. And then the Zenner can't take too many of those as well. So this is looking good. This is a, a tough swap though to go to two vine here. But the thing is, I not sold that Venom spread kills from this position. Ooh, oh, it was close. It, it was close. It was close. Yeah. Very, very That's close. Knowing your, knowing your spread. Uh, there you go. Uh, good play there. Trades Akronox for Kinu. Does get a hold up on Tuvine though. Tuvine not the best with holds up. Would have loved to see a Tremorian come in instead of the Tuvine to get Frond Whip up because this Arachnite being water type, Frond Whip is super safe uh, into that slot. But um, we'll see what they go for. Yeah, for sure. I would sure. imagine Ukama probably comes back here. Yeah, it feels really strong into the entirety of the back line, except the little Tadru yeah, being neutral, but instead the big, big boy Zenriv coming through, so we know how devastating those Crystal Spikes can be. It doesn't look like it has clean, effective damage per se on the current full board. However, damage is damage, right? Neutral damage onto each of these. And if we're talking about the Crystal Spikes on both of these Temtems, I wonder, because Shimurin is a bit of a glass cannon, right? So can two big Crystal Spikes just take it down outright? That is the question. I think the, the much more guaranteed one is that, like, Unseen Blow Sea Spikes just kills two nine. Okay. Up. Like, like there's no, like unless this is strange vest two vine this thing is like so dead to that double <laughs> it, it's like like one of the deadest things ever the only question is can two vine move before the arachnite yeah that is a big question oh, but no rishi wants the chim instead oh hey. okay and doesn't look like it did over 50%, but oh, the two vine moved before the spider. So it looks like he went for a neutral priority. Perhaps doesn't even have crystal spike, uh, but that is a really good job. Well done for full knocking out the spider before he even had a say in this game. Uh, but hey, it at least did some work against the Yukama or, or against the Akronox, right? Two unseen blows. So hey, did a little something at the very least. But uh, hey, you don't see this every day. Mr. Rishi down one Temtem against Fool. Can he try to come back just ever so slightly to try to equal things out? I mean, Tadru is here. It does have things like extra energy ball, right? Or extra energy slam. It does pack a punch. So, uh, you know, he's prioritizing the Shimurian here. Perhaps he feels like the Turok has a better matchup against the Tuvine. So another double up into that Shimurian, I feel like it certainly will go, uh, will be going down. Yeah, the really tough thing for Rishi is that uh, he's got to contend with Shimurian and Ukama in mm -hmm. order for T Turok to kind of win the game against Vola and Tuvine, which it can on its own. But he needs to leverage Zenareth and Tataru and basically just chew up as much as a Fool's team as he can. At this point with like Crystal Spikes, Extra Energy Slam, uh, crystal spikes again, a major slash, uh, uh, crystal spikes again from the Zenareth. Uh, like it really is just going to click spikes for the rest of his life here. <laughs> yeah. And I love the fake beard on him, right? Usually Zenareth was such a stamina guzzler, but with that fake beard available, oh, the cork shield, forget the crystal spike, making sure that Tadru is here for the long run. Extra energy slam. We'll be bringing it into that crystal spike and oh, 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 ease. These guys are going all the defensive. So quirk shield on Tadru and now that diamond four on the two vines. So plus plus four plus four defense special defense for the bird and nice little two plus two on the tatter so not too shabby uh but hey now that two vine is looking a little bit better like you said that was available to him a couple turns again those two shots rishi might be regretting it going forward uh, that was a very surprising turn like both of like both players choosing not to use their offensive moves to just leverage their situation was like very interesting to me like like if there's another cpg into that zenareth right like instead of diamond fording yourself if you just cpg the zeno this turn rush cpg kills zenareth right so mm, rishi has to play the turn very differently but now 
Now, Fool is staring down, like, a plus speed, and this two vine has no stamina. It's just kind of chilling here at plus four, plus four. That, like, Rishi's just kind of like, okay, I'm gonna kill your allies, <laughs> and then how are you ever killing my two rock, right? Like, it's very, very hard for them to win from here uh, at that point, so. Yeah, you very... definitely got a fair point, I say, for sure. But by the other token, if Rishi had just use the crystal spikes onto the two vine or the Tumurian, then he moves his board state ahead. But by court shielding, again, I don't think Tataru is going to be targeted anytime soon, right? It's just a very interesting uh, choice of uh, allocation of resources from both players there. I think overall the trade probably benefits Rishi, but it's tough to say at this point. I think so as well. I think he acknowledges that Tataru is probably going to be that winning condition for the side of Rishi just because 2-Rock and Zenerv doesn't seem like it's going to be doing too effective damage for on this Yukama, right? But here we go. Sleeping the Volar. Oh, never mind. You don't have the mental synergy. So just going to be doing good damage on the Volarin. And Major Slash. Can it get a kill here? 68% almost, but taking it down to 16 Oh, it's the freeze. It's freeze time, and it looks like Rishi has overexerted on the Zeno. That's a tough spot to be in against freeze, because now he's got a little more speed on the Volarend. He's going to be able to get in there, get Tataru frozen. Because, oh no, but Tataru has plus two speed from the turbo, so it's possible that he can outspeed here. Yeah, we and saw. And that'll be very impactful. We saw the Major Slash go before the Volarin, but Yukama's another beast when it comes to speed, right? So we saw, you, we know three priority uh, uh, Aquatic Whirlwind is online. So we'll see. We'll see indeed if the Tsunami can outspeed the plus two speed Tadru. But on that same note, Tadru is virtually overexerted, right? You have enough stamina to maybe get off one more attack. But other than that, it is not looking too good. It is very hard for Tsuvine to kill them. At plus two defense, this Tataru with a nutrition bar, although the nutrition bar will likely have faded by then. It's a very bulky temp. Rishi chooses to save the tap from getting frozen. This is like a very reasonable play. Will it cost him his Zenoreth? Yes, it will. That is uh, Yikers, I would say. Because now the cold breeze. Like, Rishi is just going to get frozen on this Tataru for sure now, because Voldemort is definitely faster at plus two speed, so. He is looking like his Tataru is, is in a bit of a tricky spot where it's going to only get the one turn of freeze, but it will very likely get frozen. And then he's probably going to eat a Aquatic Whirlwind here. Yeah, or the maybe two rock. this fool will go for the double. You know, I could see a world where he goes for Tataru, but might as well just dish out the pain while you can, right? Two rock, nowhere to run. Aquatic Whirlwind is online. Like we said, I think it does something in the neighborhood of 80% on the two rock, if not even more. So let's go ahead and find out firsthand. So yeah, even more, virtually 90%. Cold Breeze, as you mentioned, will be sleeping the Taru, so no major slash available to him for this turn. And now we know Yukama does have that speed. Water Cannon following up. Fool is looking quite good here, especially considering that he still has a plus four, plus four, two vine just hanging out in the back line. It might just be like a 2v1 situa uh, situation. Little old Taru versus the remaining of Fool's team. And I think this is a combo you do not want to mess with. You combo with this tsunami synergy, it is looking quite good for him. For sure. No, I think this is a uh, well played end game here by Fool. Uh, the the court shield um, diamond four turn was just, that was such a, a strange turn from both players, uh, choosing to both take defensive moves at the same time. I don't think it worked out very well for Fool if Rishi doesn't also do it. Like Rishi court shielding made the diamond fort play really good mm -hmm. i'm i'm not i'm not certain that that it was like correct from either of them to do that but it was just like a very strange and interesting turn uh which is why we watch the games that's why i play them out exactly right i think it was just a hedge to make sure that the taru doesn't have enough physical attack 
to, you know, virtually two shot the two vines. So maybe it was something like that. But at the very least, manages to take down that Yukama. But a little bit too late. A CPG, even though it's a plus two defense, Tataru, it looks like fool locking down game number one of our semis. Let's see, can Mr. Rishi, multi time champion in our plus tournaments. So if there's anyone that could get the job done who has felt the pressure of being behind one game, it will be Mr. Rishi. Unfortunately, doesn't have access to that grand pull here but you know i will say the acronox on full side did do a lot of work so i do like this uh this pick and bans for the side of rishi just getting rid of the acronox all out because you do have two rock but now with the grandpa ban, it is really hard to get rid of the Acronox. But oh, we said it is. We said Freeze was going to be very, very impactful in this kind of format. And it looks like Freeze it is. Cold Breeze on with the left, Cold Breeze on the right. How do you stop that? Well, we already know uh, that, uh, first of all, I think I think it's kind of interesting that, uh, you know, uh, Painus is uh, very, very rigid with the, with the ban on Grandpa here, going back to it in both games. Um... Another thing we're going to see here is, so he's aware that um, Rishi's bait on Arachnite, right? Like, he, mm -hmm. he knows that. Uh, so, I wonder if you're, if you're, if you're fool, you're up a game. Let's Gamba that this Arachnite just doesn't have Thunderstrike. Okay. Right? Like, it, like, it, like, if, <laughs> like, if, if, if Arachnite doesn't have Thunderstrike, I think Fool's position in this game is, like, immaculate, right? He can freeze the Kinu, mm -hmm. then Rishi only gets to attack with one Tem. Uh, he can then position it to uh, hit, hit hit by like water cannon toxic move back to back, right? Like he can definitely set up a kill threat situation onto a Raconite and play around the bait to do so. Um, so, but if the Raconite has oh my, I crash, sorry. sorry. Uh, hey, did can you, you get your crash? screen in Discord? Yeah, can you share your screen in Discord? But I'm watching them kind of come in here, Kino Arachnite. So if if Rishi has uh, Thunderstrike, then uh, um, you know, know uh, Painus is these. definitely gonna be gonna be flopping a little bit here. But uh, if not, then uh, it'd be a very hard situation for Rishi for sure. Yeah, definitely. And well said. I wonder though, and let me know if you have it east, of course, but I wonder, does he have Thunderstrike? We haven't seen it all tournament or does it matter? But okay, doesn't go for the Cold Breeze on the Akronite, of course, because of that bait. So trying to just freeze the Kinu. But here's the moment of truth. Is Thunderstrike available for Rishi? We're about to be finding out here very shortly. And it does. Oh, there it is. All right. uh, huge. Oh. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't oh, kill. Lives. What? Lives. Oh. What kind of a... special defense investment on this Wimplump are we witnessing here? I've never seen a Wimplump survive a Thunderstrike ever. That was a that was a surprise for sure. Yeah, absolutely insane. Maybe Fool knew that it had Thunderstrike, but he just did not care. He knew 4x damage. It does not matter. The Wimplump is here to stay. <laughs> Insanity sure uh, i wonder if now they try to create that sort of sort of combo sort of double team him a little bit with the whip plump and the bowler end onto uh onto rishi here from from pain uh, water cannon toxic move seems really really strong here I think so as well. So let's see. Uh, of course, the Wimplum will be indeed faster. So just trying to save the spider just down the road. You never know. Trying to get another attack off. But instead, will be that Zenner trying to catch a bit of these attacks that will be incoming in. And those being the HKS. Let's check it out. Doesn't have too much speed. So bring it down to about 57%. Now the speed going up, up and away. But the Toxic Synergy Water Cannon doesn't bring it in that Death Door range. Okay, about 5% shy from that full full on death this is really tough that the whip lump lived here though for rishi uh like the tornado now Zenorith's in tornado kill threat range uh my pianist can like even like swap out the bowler end if he wants he can just freeze kinu again the next turn and it's just like really tough uh you could definitely say that uh, pianist is ahead, is ahead mm -hmm. uh, right now 
Exactly. Very, well very, said. very firm position <laughs> from Payne uh, at this point. Exactly right. So very, very dominant position going forward in this turn. As you mentioned, Kinu's just been sleeping in an ice coma this entire start of the game. And now Xander, of course, it could outspeed the Wimplump, but at plus one speed, plus two speed, respectively, on Payne's side, it looks like he does have the upper hand. So Xander, if it looks like he just has Rishi on the back burner, just backstepping away, Chooses maybe sacrifice the Akronite. Or never mind. Wait a second. He's what? just covering the swap with Venom spread there. Uh, which is really interesting to see. But uh, Rishi does get the Arachnite in. You can definitely feel, though, like now Venom spread is available to target Kinu if he wants to. There's a lot of different situations. Uh, you can see that uh, Pain just really has a strong pair here with Whiplump and Volarend. Really testing Rishi uh, at this point. Uh, very difficult uh, for him to respond. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, at least the information is clear to fool that Thunderstrike is online and at minus four special defense on this Volarin, I'm pretty sure that Thunderstrike will be devastating amount of damage. And if Kini wants to stay in, which it looks like he doesn't, instead wants to bring in that Zener. Let's see what he has in mind. Where does Fool want to attack? Does he attack the Kinu? It might just be a double freeze turn like he did on the opener. Right, but he did he forget that it's uh it's bait? Yeah. Oh, it's perhaps. not. It's, yeah, perhaps he forgot. And I mean that that bait really just kind of shafting his game plan here because he's going for the tsunami, but it's not going to be a two X because of the type change of Arachnite. And that means that uh, you know Thunderstrike uh, is there to kind of to pierce into the Volarent here, but goes for unseen blow instead, just finishing off the Whiplum. Exactly right, but honestly, a little bit too late. This Wimplum should have gone down to the single Thunderstrike in the opener. It's either a very low special attack investment on this Akronite or a lot of special defense. I can't really tell, but it didn't have plus two special attack on the first Thunderstrike, right? The adaptive trait did not proc. So if it That's did, right. that Thunderstrike would have indeed killed. Uh, but very well done. So Mr. Rishi, knowing how to maneuver his Temtems to try to try to regain this momentum that he lost nice and early to that freeze one-two punch. But okay, the Shimura coming in now. Doesn't seem like it has too much effective damage, but damage nonetheless, right? That nice little plus one attack should be good amount of damage from anything applied. And it can't, it doesn't seem like it will re, uh, be receiving too much damage. I say that, but it is a bit fragile of a Temtem, right? Unseen blow, major slash from the Tataru. I dare say that could be a good old one-two punch. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think early on in this game, it looked like, you know, Rishi was screwed by uh, Pianus' plan here. But uh, I think the freeze has kind of died down now. Now that it's gone, Rishi has this, like, high attack on Arachnite. It, it's possible that he could start chewing through more of um, Fool's team. Uh, especially with the Tataru to kind of provide this, uh, this double with the extra energy slam as well. I think so as well. You know, looking at the bigger picture on the back line, Rishi's Akronite poses a humongous threat for the entirety of the team, right? Thunderstrike on that minus defense, Volarin. Thunderstrike on the Wayne Crystal, Tuvine. Thunderstrike on the Yukama. Everything looking good. So I don't blame Fool for prioritizing taking down the Spider ASAP. But oh, here goes the Thunderstrike intended for the Volarin. We'll be catching the two vine and doesn't do that much damage. I think it's not a special attack invested Akronite. Maybe Mr. Rishi relying more heavily on the plus two uh, special attack that he gets from the trait. Maybe he doesn't have too much special attack investment. What do you think, Is? I think there's a couple options. Uh, Cinder Platt once theorized that possibly the best way to build two vine is just like max hp max special defense uh that is like a really good way to play that temp so that may be what um Painus is is kind of running here uh which wouldn't wouldn't surprise me another situation is that just like like you said rishi is just has a high amount of speed on this arachnite to try and get cozy nets off uh mm -hmm. after turbo choreography uh and it just doesn't have that much special attack investment uh to make use of thunderstrike with uh, both are totally reasonable uh, situations. Rishi's got to be a little bit careful, though, for sure. Like, if Arachnite goes down to Chimurian here, it can be... It's going to be really tough for Rishi to recover, I would imagine. Uh, it, you know, he's going to... Uh, definitely got to watch the back door here from... Uh, Pain is coming in with the CPG. <laughs> oh, down it goes. Down it goes, indeed. So the Akronite won't be receiving that turbo choreography. It's going to be a solo dolo tatter getting that plus two speed. But CPG number one, CPG number two going off on 24.5%. 
So, oh, things are going from bad to worse for Mr. Rishi. Pain is still with four temp temps, relatively healthy, and the same cannot be said about Rishi, right? The Kinu not looking too good into this double crystal board. However, the Calibus feels a bit lackluster as well. The Toxic Ticks doesn't do too much because of the crystal typing. And on the other side, we're talking about wind and potentially neutral nature damage, right? So this is looking good. I'm wondering though, do you prioritize the Tadru? Because the Tadru is the only Temtem that could really do a lot of damage on your own Temtems, right? Oh, okay. So getting away from uh, dick puns for a sec here and back to actual casting, uh, one of the nice things you can do to cover here is just doubling into the Calibus uh, with the front whip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this co this covers a Kinu swap uh, decently well, and it's the last turn you get to attack on Timurine, so you might as well just steal the most damage you can. And now it's, like I said, was talking about with Kundra's game, although that didn't go well for Kundra's. This is a great uh, moment for uh, Painus here to simplify their position, right? Like CPG plus a wind attack from Volarend uh, is um, going to kill Calibus, mm -hmm. and it's going to kill Kinu if Kinu swaps in. Exactly so, right. So, the, so take the kill that's offered to you. Tataru has almost no stamina. Just ignore it. Uh, make Rishi wish he was playing Vanks instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, after you've done that, you can go ahead and focus down the other slot. And uh, you're going to let the Tataru kind of on an island for the rest of the game. Exactly right. I think you nailed it perfectly. So well said. It looks like things are wrapped up, especially considering the fact that we have not seen a hyperkinetic strike from Painus's Volarin just yet. So a big devastating blow on the Calibus. If it comes in, he has all his bases covered with a follow-up CPG. If the Calibus stays in, it goes down. CPG goes onto the Tataru. But look at all that stamina that the bait item provided on the two vines. CPG isn't going to be overexerting him, allowing that CPG for the following turn. So little by little, Mr. Fool 808 looking like he's locking down a seat in our grand finals today. Very impressive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's also really good for uh, Painus to, to wrap it up here. It's always important that you protect mm -hmm. your lead when you're in front. So uh, it's good to see that he's, you know, using protection on that. Uh, on his turns here to, to keep himself in front. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But speaking of Kinu, it is a little bit too late. You don't have any effective damage. Of course, a beta burst slash, or I guess only a beta burst, right? Mine is all the way max special defense. I say a beta burst will be killing, but I think it's a little bit too late. Toxic Plume, just make sure the Tadru can't do anything going forward. And let's see, does the CPG outspeed is the question. Some Kinus are ran rather fast. Uh, but first things first, the major slash from the overexerted Tadaru, or what will be the overexerted Tadaru, trying to bring down the Volarin. And interesting, before the CPG connection, it will be a nice little hypnosis. Okay, hey, I mean, that Rishi probably, that turned but probably about as well for him as it could have, uh, given kind of everything that's been happening here. There's a decent chance that he can, no, nah, I would say the key is probably dead, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was a, probably un, unwinnable from this position for Rishi. So, I will say, uh, I think the entirety of the competitive community at this point were not big two vine believers. So, I think <laughs> it was very interesting in this format. You know, Tolkien, that high special attack fire time banned out. Golzi, which can threaten it with melee moves, banned out. Rolder, which walls it pretty well, with, especially with thick skin. Mm -hmm. We see these temps start to get banned out. We see Gaialis not available as a crystal. Uh, Fool has made an interesting choice here to go for Chimurian and Tuvine, kind of seeing that the Earth, Fire, and Melee Thames, the best versions of them, have been banned out. And I think they're being rewarded for that uh, decision in this metagame. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It looks like Fool did a lot of research. What Temptons will be available and which ones are going to be really, really impactful going forward. And he picked them really well. It looks like, as we keep saying, locking in that gold and ticket. Grand Finals, Fool 808. You are heading over there. So GG, GG, sir. And of course, GG to Mr. Rishi. Fantastic play today. Uh, but falling a bit short to the likes of Painus. So congrats.